Hello everyone, chapter 12, part 7, profit maximization for monopolistic competition. Let's remember what monopolistic competition entailed. There are a large number of firms sell a differentiated product in these markets. Products are close but not perfect substitutes. Market is monopolistic though. Product differentiation creates a degree of some sort of market power. It's not just like exact like monopolist but it is similar to it market is competitive large number of firms with easy entry threatening the long run profitability of monopolistically competitive company okay so how does it work for a monopolistically competitive company short run equilibrium is good news this is a great news it's identical to monopoly okay so everything we did applies here. Unrestricted entry exit leads to different long run equilibrium. I'm just going to tell you in the long run, economic profit will always be zero for monopolistically competitive firm. So therefore you need to be constantly innovating. For instance, Starbucks, I mean, they have innovated so many times. They introduced bakery items, bakery, cake pops colorful you know unicorn drink unicorn drink that is out some drinks for special holidays so they keep changing they keep innovating some starbucks actually sell alcohol too so they you know they're all different all right so long run equilibrium is attained attained when demand curve for each producer's tangent to tangent to its long run average cost curve i'm going to show it to you uh, at equilibrium price is going to be exactly equal to the long run average cost curve marginal revenue will be equal to marginal cost okay so this is already we know when this implies zero economic profits okay so this is an example of short run short run profit maximization right demand curve i'm just going to go over curves real quick we got a demand for monopolistically competitive restaurant, marginal revenue, short run marginal cost, average total cost. Okay. So first step, short run marginal cost, marginal revenue intersect quantities here. Go hit the demand curve point A. This is your price level. Go hit your average total cost curve. This is your average total cost curve. In this example, quantity, right? Price minus ATC, this is a positive number, positive, so profits are positive. Actually, it's this blue shaded area. This is your profits, okay? So what happens in the long run? This was your short run, demand curve, initial, monopolistic, the competitive. So as new competitors enter, they take away from your market share so your demand they're gonna steal or eat off of your demand so demand will shift to the left so this demand curve will shift to the left till when till demand curve is tangent touching at one point a long run average cost curve right here so i'm going to clear everything okay so in the long run a monopolistically competitive company's demand curve will be tangent. So I'm going to call this point A. Tangent to long run average cost curve at point A. So what happens as a result? Let's take a look. Marginal revenue is here. Marginal cost. Long run marginal cost. This is the optimal level of quantity. Go ahead to demand curve. That's the price level. Okay. And what's the average total cost? Go ahead the average total cost. Oh, same spot. ATC. Price is exactly equal to ATC, so your profits will be quantity price minus ATC. If these are equal to each other, this is zero, so your profits will be zero. So the only difference between monopolistically competitive firm and monopolies in the short run, if you have positive economic profit for the monopolistically competitive firms, in the long run, this will be zero. If it was a monopoly, Monopoly can actually sustain long run positive economic profits. Okay, I'll see you in the next part. Here we are going to learn to implement the profit maximizing output and pricing decision. See you then.